Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study here at Shallow Baptist Church, one church in two locations, where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Allen Duncan. So I'm so glad to be with you tonight. I'm excited. This is my wrap-up, my third class. And you know what the title is, It's Not What It Looks Like. So I'm going to ask you right now, those who normally watch this on Facebook, call up a family member or a friend and let them know there is a word for them tonight. You can reach us on um, our YouTube channel, SBC Praise Church, and join in with us and celebrate as we join together, uh, spending time in the Word of God, breaking bread together um, with my family and my friends. So we welcome you. And we're going to get right into it. I'm going to start out with a word of prayer. I'm going to ask if you would join in with me. I know you might be busy. You might be trying to prepare your dinner and you're ready to sit down. But I believe God has a word for you that can give you strength to get you through this week. Somebody had a rough day. Somebody had a rough night. But God is faithful to what he has called us to do. And he's faithful to his word. He has promised us some things. And God is faithful to deliver on what he promised us. All he asks us to do is trust in him with everything we have. So let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, as we open up the word of God together. Lord, I pray that you would use me, speak through me, Lord. But most of all, Lord, let the word fall on good ground. Let it fall on somebody who's been searching for an answer. Somebody who has been seeking for a direction knowing that the only direction could come from you, Lord. They tried everything else, Lord, and now they're reaching out to you. Lord, I know you won't fail them, and I pray that you'll give me the ability not to fail them as I deliver the word to them tonight. So, Lord, we want to thank you. And, Lord, right now, we take this opportunity right now. There's a lot of people out there that are sick and shut. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and going through and maybe been struggling for a period of time. I, I, I breathe, I ask you to breathe the Holy Spirit upon them, Lord. Rest upon them right now. Strengthen them where they are. Heal them where they are. Deliver them where they are, Lord, so they can rejoice and continue to give you praise for who you are and what you're able to do. A keeping God, a loving God, a forgiving God, a gracious God, a sovereign God. For that, we say thank you. We honor you tonight, and we count all these blessings done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise, a wave offering, just a heart of thanksgiving for being so great and kind to us. It's not what it looks like. It is not what it looks like. We talked about, uh, this is our third week. We're closing now with this. And you know what our foundation scripture was, Luke 23, 42. And he said unto them, and he said unto Jesus, this is the thief, remember me when I come into thy kingdom. And we talked about, the, showed you the picture here. Let me get it. My clicker's not acting right, so. The picture here of Jesus hanging on the cross. Between two thieves. I get it. He hanging on the cross between two thieves. And it looks like it was over. It looks like the enemy had defeated our Savior. It looked like everything he came to do had failed. But I come to tell you tonight that Jesus did not fail. He knew exactly what he was doing. He had a purpose and a plan for you and I. And his purpose was coming here on earth as he wrapped himself in flesh, as he, as he was able to feel what we feel. He was able to feel the infirmities of the people. He was able to feel the trials and the tribulations we had to go through, the pressures of the world, the, the, the enemy, how the enemy comes in like a flood and try to take over our mind and try to cause us to stumble. But Jesus had a better purpose. And his purpose was on the cross, the cross of Calvary. He knew what he had to do, and he was the only one that could pay the ultimate price and try bullets and goats 
They tried different other animals to sacrifice that could take the place of sin. But you and I know there was nothing able to take away the sin but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he accomplished that on the cross, the cross of Calvary. And I just want to say right now that I'm so glad that he carried out his assignment. Because he, he could have turned his back on us. He could have said, you know what, that's enough. When he was in the garden that we sent me, he said, Lord, if that will, he was praying and asked his disciples to stay away, wait for, for an hour while he went off to pray. And the pressure came on him. He was able to feel the pressure, the anxiety that comes on you and I. That's why when we pray or when we hurt him or when we're going through, we, we pray. We know he understands our pain. He understands our moans and our groans because he got a chance to experience it for himself. He said, Lord, if it's thy will, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, nevertheless, thy will, Lord, be done. Here we go. I'm getting somewhere. Here's the picture. I want you to take a look at this picture. And, and this is a, like I said, this is a, this is a beautiful picture here. When I say beautiful, it's not as horrible as what Christ had to go through. It's still him hanging on the cross, sacrificing his life for us, in between two thieves. But the thing is, the Bible says his body was unrecognizable because he was whipped and beat all night long. I didn't want to put that picture up here. I wanted to put this picture, but you could still realize what he had to go through. His feet, his hands, his head, the thorns, three inch storms being placed in his head. And out look, came blood and water out of his head, pierced in his side. He had been beaten all the way to Calvary. This is what our Savior went through for you and I. Could have chosen another way, but this was the only way, and he chose it for you and I because he knew that once he finished what he had came to do, it was done. And God knew that all we have to do is believe in his son. What I love about this story, and I, I know I'm jumping ahead, but I'm, I'm so excited about uh, talking tonight to you believers and those who know the Lord, know Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. We have so much to be excited for. In a chaos world, and everything that's going on in the world, yes, the injustice, the, the, the racism, the hatred, and the anger, and the bitterness, and the, oh, everything that's going on in uh, Pandemic, you know, it seems like it's, it's starting to tick up again. We don't know what's going on in the world, but we do have hope in Jesus Christ. We do have hope in our Savior. In spite of what's going on, the believers need to step back and sometimes look at this picture. I used, I used to do when I get up upset with myself and the world. You can't get upset with yourself. The reason why I get upset with myself sometimes because I ought to know better. As good as God has been to me. I know I ain't alone. As good as God has been to me, sometimes I wind up doing the stupidest things. And what I mean by that? That you know it's impossible to please God without faith. And some of the challenges that come in my life that I've been through before, God done brought me out. I've been through that before. Financial challenge. The Lord done brought me out. Uh, learn how to be a giver. Follow the principles of God. Knowing that if you give, God will give back to you. And then when trial come, a trouble come, dealing with finance, here I go with my little pity party. Those are the things I get upset with myself because God has proven himself over and over again. If, it might have been finance with me, but it could have been a relationship with you, with somebody else. God told you to be still and know that I'm God. It could be your anger or your attitude. It's not what it looks like. And this lesson is wrapped around the Lord teaching us that it's not always what it looks like. We talked about the woman with an issue of blood. Twelve years, been over. Spending all her money. It looked bad. Praying. Asking for help. But she was seeking everybody but the Savior. And when she got her eyes fixated on Jesus, it says, she said, if I could just get close enough to him to touch what he's wearing. 
Sometimes we need to just get close enough to Jesus to touch what he's wearing. We need to get close enough to touch his word. We need to touch his promises in the word of God. We need to stand on what God has given us. He has he had already sacrificed his life on the cross, but he gave his word and he left his Holy Spirit. If you don't know about the Holy Spirit, you need to come to Bible study <laughs> live. Pastor Duncan is teaching about the Holy Spirit. The triune being, the, the, the one that said God, God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And now by getting that teaching, now I pray different. Pray now, Lord. And this is what I, I gained from the Bible study. This is why it's so important to, to get, on, get out. Get out your house and come to Bible study. Because as he was teaching, some already knew, but sometimes you need to be reminded of how much power our God possesses. And that it's everywhere at one time. And that when he, in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, when he said he turned nothing into something, he said in the midst of darkness, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters and there became life and animals in the, in the water, in the sea. Because the Holy Spirit had that much power to hover over the water. And now we got that precious Holy Spirit living on the inside of us and we want to moan and groan. We need to be that light shining in the midst of dark. I'm talking this my intro, y'all. Huh? We need to be that light shining in the midst of darkness so when the world went to crime, we ought to have the joy of the Lord as our strength. We ought to be standing up bold with our heads up high. And we need to be encouraging them saying, it's not what it looks like. I know it looks bad. I know it feels bad. But our hope is in him. Because what he did, what he did on the cross. We talked about a lot of different things. We talked about the gloom and doom, how, how it looks. How it feels. It looked like Christ had been defeated and the enemy had won, but we know that wasn't the truth. And also, you must first know who you are. We talked about knowing who you are in Christ. It's, it's very difficult to face the enemy, it's very difficult to face, face your flesh, the pressure that you come on against in your flesh, the temptations, the the, you know, the thrills that our flesh want to be pleased. You can't fight that off without knowing who you are in Christ. You got to know that you've been delivered from your sin. And he done it. We talked about he chose us. St. John 15, 16. That we didn't choose him, he chose us. And since he chose us, he said he chose us for a purpose. He said that we may gain, we may gain fruit. And our fruit record may, may remain remain, excuse me, get tripped up here, that our fruit would remain, meaning the gift he had given us, the things that other people see in us will last, it will stand. Those are some of the things that we went over. We got so much to cover tonight, just setting the groundwork again. My click is not working, I'm using it with my finger, but I'm, the devil's not going to stop what the Lord has given me to speak upon tonight. Jesus rose from the dead, we talked about that. Jesus did what no other could do. He rose from the dead. Don't just take our word for it. Over 500, 500 billion people, excuse me, 500 people, but 500 billion people have read about it and more than that. But it says over 500, when he rose, over 500 people saw Jesus alive at that time after his death of the cross. Jesus' resurrection from the dead proved that Jesus can give us victory over sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus said we must be born again. That's what he told Nicodemus. Nicodemus asked, how can a man enter again? A second time into his mother's womb. And Jesus explained to him, a man must be born again. Dying from his old nature. Taking on his new nature. But it comes by faith. Believing in the one who sacrificed his life. We need to know the importance of Jesus' death on the cross. If he didn't die, he would have never been able to raise, be raised from the dead as, as he had promised. And because he rose up, we have the ability to rise above 
every situation and every storm that we go through. It's not what it looks like. Stop giving the enemy the victory when the victory belongs to you. Christ already paid the price. Peter seen Jesus after the crucifixion. Jesus, Peter did. Now I would remind you of the gospel. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. And in accordance with the scripture, and he appeared to Cephas, which is Peter, then to the twelve disciples. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. Jesus did what he said he was going to do. He was faithful to what he said he was going to do. He said he would be whipped. He said he was going to be crucified. But he promised that he would be raised from the dead. That's what we covered tonight. I want to skip down here. Because of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.21, because of Christ, he had, for he made him who knew no sin for sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Before I go on, I want to remind you that we are the righteousness of God because of what Christ did. Christ worked and it was not in vain, but he did it so we can remain righteous. Amen? We belong to him. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, it says, Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over that which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which have, he hath purchased with his blood. We talked about the power of his blood. There is power in the blood that was shed that covers our sin, to wash away our sins. The blood, the blood, the blood. Somebody say the blood. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Neither by blood of goats or cat. Am I talking about that? They couldn't pay the price. But by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Redemption. We have been redeemed by his blood. You are brought with a price, but not of your service. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. Amen? Please write these scriptures down. They're very important. We talked about being sealed with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to move on real quick here. But one thing I do want to let you know, that our foundation scripture with the two thieves, we highlighted the one thief that said, Lord, remember me. And I said last week, sometimes we need to call on the Lord and say, Lord, remember me. It was you that got me out of that trouble that I was in. When I didn't even know how to ask for forgiveness, it was you. Lord, remember me. Those are powerful words. To me, those are words of repentance. Saying what I've done, the sin that I caused, I deserve death. But Lord, all you did was represent talking about Christ. The thief talking to Christ. I can imagine what was going on in his mind. Ready to die. Knowing he couldn't escape. But had sense enough to say, Lord, remember me. So when you're in your darkest hour, when it seems like all the, all the walls are collapsing all around you, I'm talking to somebody here. When somebody came after your character, they came after you, who you are, your integrity, and sold at you, or they, they touched you, whatever it may be, and you think you can't go to anybody, I come to tell you that you do have somebody you can go to, and his name is Jesus. You can go to him because he came to pay the price for all the heck that we went through. Yes, I said heck. All the heck that we went through. All the suffering that we went through. Yeah, we still going to have to go through some trials and tribulations in our life. Yeah, we still going to have some hang up. We still going to have some disappointment. We still might lose some things. But one thing I can guarantee you, that if you trust in him, if you depend on him, and you stand on his word and the promises of God, 
with your yes and amen. He will give you the strength to get through whatever you're going through. I don't care how bad it is. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Don't let your flesh talk you out of it. Just know that God will make a way out of nowhere. Those who might be listening on the air, I want to share with you that it's no accident that you have been to the um, drunk tuned in this channel. Because on my way down here, I was asking the Lord, Lord, give me something to tell them that they will not forget. They will hold on to for a lifetime. And the Lord wanted me to mention to you that he loves you. No matter what you've done. The Lord loves you. And as believers, we need to tell the world and we need to tell ourselves how much Christ loved us. He loved us so much. God said, I, for God so loved the world. That's you and I. He said, for God so loved the world that whosoever believe in his son shall not perish but have eternal life. And I'm talking about his son tonight. Because if you need to grab on anything to make it through the rough times you've been through, you need to grab hold to Christ and his finished work. I didn't say his work to be finished. I said his finished work. We forget the work that he came is done. Now all God has asked us to do is trust in him, believe in him. I, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Grab hold to this because your life depends upon it. We talked about the two themes. Healing without faith. We talked about that. It's not over. We talked about Jairus and his daughter. Jairus asked Jesus to come see about his daughter. And before they got to him, she had already died. And Jesus said, your daughter is not sleeping. And once Jesus got there, prayed over her. And life entered back into her. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus didn't come and die, the Holy Spirit couldn't come. The Comforter. And we need to know that we have the Christ. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us that no matter what we go through, no matter what you face, God is with us. That's something to shout about. We talked about, I'm getting caught up to where I was at. We talked about optimism, optimism and pessimism. We talked about the, the positive thinking and, and how you should be optimistic over every situation that might come up in your life. When a situation comes that you can't explain, how to think positive, always hoping and looking for a way out. And I've told you that optimism, optimism is great. Go for it. But don't take the definition of optimism and leave faith in God out. Don't separate the two because it is a good slogan. It is a good phrase. It is a good uh, quotation. But you have to have faith. Believing in something that you can't see. You might can't see your way out. The title of the message is not what it looks like. You might can't see your way out. It looks like it's over. But you got to believe by faith that the God of promise, the one who died on the cross, Jesus, our Savior, the one who made a way out of nowhere, he died that you can have that same power to be able to speak to the mountain, be able to speak to your situation, and command it to move. But it's a thing, uh, according to the book of Mark, 11th chapter, verse 22, it says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in him, your Savior, the creator of all things. The reason why I call God the Savior because they connected, and God had a purpose and a plan. And he used his own self to be able to make a way for us. He poured out himself into flesh and became Christ for us. Only God can do that. Only God can do the supernatural things like that that can redeem us back to him. But he gave us power to be able to speak to your situation, a mountain and command it to move. He said, and not have doubt in your heart. But he said, before you go do this, you got to forget. I need to talk to somebody tonight. we got to learn how to forget. I know he, somebody said, he go, he go to pop calling Kettle Black. I need to forget. 
There's some people out there. There's some situations that happened that we haven't truly forgiven them for. I, I, I want to let you know, you can't go on until you know how to forgive. There's some things that the Lord want to happen to flourish in your life until we learn to listen and to obey his word. It says forgive. Oh, that our Heavenly Father can't forgive us. We have a lot of unforgiveness. I say small, but it's, it can turn big once you hold on to it. We have allowed unforgiveness to interrupt our relationship with our Savior. He has all this forgiveness. He has all this peace and joy and reconciliation and all, all this fellowship with our brothers and sisters. And we walk around with unforgiveness in our heart over something that happened 20 years ago. It's not what it looks like because you have the power to change the situation by faith. We talk about pessimism. Pessimism, excuse me. Pessimistic, meaning talking negative. Always got something negative to say. Looming, doom and gloom. Woe is me. Woe is me. Always having something that putting somebody down. Don't know how to encourage nobody. Don't know how to to listen to nobody. You always want to give your opinion. Knowing what you say is going to offend somebody, but you say it anyway. We talked about that, but what we want to talk about tonight is trust in number three. Trusting. Trusting. Trustworthiness are the characteristics or behavior of one person that inspires positive expectation in another person. Are you hearing this? Trusting is your characteristic or behavior. It's a behavior of one person that inspires a positive expectation in another. The tendency that to make oneself vulnerable to others in general. Uh, research suggests that this general tendency can change overnight. Meaning trusting in something. You know how we trust in somebody, we trust in people. But there's some events that could come, come forth and cause you not to trust them. Say you gave them some information and you told them not to say anything. But they went and said it anyway. Those type of uh, activities can cause us not to trust people. And the Bible said, put not just stock in man. He said, let no man deceive you. We already know what scripture says. But he said, trust in him. Trust in the Lord. The reason why he wants you to trust in him, the reason why he wants you to put so much confidence in man and women, because they can't hold what Christ can hold. You can go to him in the midnight hour. You can go to him whatever you may be struggling with, and you don't have to worry about it being told over and over again. Trust in him. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. All your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Your path. Envious. Envious. Here's another one. Envious. Envious is wanting what someone else has. Do you know anybody like that? Every time you turn around, they want to Je jealousy and envy is two different things. I don't want to connect them to two. But envy is wanting something somebody else has. You you might see your neighbor with a new car or your co-worker get a new job and you desire the same thing. You might feel a sense of resentment towards an individual. There's a chemical imbalance of changes going to happen in your body because of envy. These are the tools that the enemy used to trip up believers. The reason why the Lord gave me this title for you tonight is not what it looks like. And we're closing, this is our third session, we're closing in this because I need to let you know it's not what it looks like. Don't let the enemy fool you with this trip up here. Even with trust, trust can be positive. It's supposed to be positive. You're trusting somebody. You put, but you've got to be careful who you put your trust in. 
We come to church and we get damaged for trusting people. And then we get hurt and we take it out on God. We act like God done it to us. We got to remember that we all came this path. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We struggle in these areas. But we have to grab on to something. And he said, trusting in his word. Trust in him. Because he said, I won't fail you. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. All these promises God, he promised to keep us. And because we let envy and jealousy and we let pessimistic, uh, pessimistic uh, mentality and thought process, we let that intervene in our spirit and it seemed as Christ has left us. It seemed that God has left us, but he was there the whole time. It's good to know definitions of these, these words and un have an understanding of them. But what I'm telling you tonight is don't let them interfere with your relationship with God. Don't let them stop you from trusting in the only one that is trustworthy. I like to be able to trust people. It is some people you can't trust. There are people out there that do love you. They love you to life. But it's a trust in God. Because in that midnight hour, he's the only one you can depend on. Jealousy is something different. Jealousy is more about holding on to something that you already have. You have a husband. You have a wife. And you're still jealous. If you're jealous, of, you already have it. But envy is wanting something someone else has. These are the tools the enemy uses to trap us and to keep us bound. And we talked about three behavior patterns of a human. Uh, I read in scientific research, human behavior. This is scientific research. And it's funny how we believe in scientific research, but we don't believe, we don't want to believe what the Word of God has to say. We said there were so many different interpretations of the Bible, but you don't think there's so many different interpretations of research? Research is just a guide that I go by, but I put my stock in the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the only thing that proves itself to be faithful and I have a return on investment. God's promise has been returned to me. The favor of God has fell on me. Not only that, when things didn't go my way, God was able to give me the strength. I'm talking to somebody. If God was able to give you the script to, to get through some trials and tribulations, you ought to stop right now and throw your hands up in the air and give him thanks. In scientific research, human behavior is a complex interaction of three components. We talked about one of your actions, your thoughts, and your emotions. Your act, your, your reaction or your action when a situation occurs. How do you act? How do you, how do you perform when something goes? You got some bad news. You got some bad news. Doctor just called and said, we need you to come in. We have a doctor's report that don't sound good. Cancer has come back. We know you rang the bell. We know you celebrated. But it's back now. And it seems to us, according to our research, that seems like it's coming back for vengeance. Now, you, you, you're believing. Or you're unbelieving. Because it happened to all of us. I just want to encourage you that there is someone that can strengthen you. There is someone that can hold you. There's someone, someone who can walk you through every event in your life if you let it. What are your reactions? What's your situation? What, what do you do in that situation? Most people, including myself, might shed a few tears, especially after I don't ring the victim, after I, I don't ring the bell and think that I've been delivered or been cancer free and just to get the news to come back. This is what people go through in life. Or you get that phone call in the middle of the night. I'm talking to somebody here. Your child. Your only child. No longer here. Bad news. Bad news. Job just folded up. Just, just got the job. Just bought a house. Car. Everything's, everything's moving well. Join the church. I'm, I'm giving my tithes. And no job. How do, you act? How do you react when a situation occurs? Now, I got scriptures I can give you, but I want you to think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. How do I act? 
I come to church, I praise with God, hurting on the inside, say, Lord, where are you? He's right there. Those are the moments when it's not what it looks like. God didn't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen to you. God didn't know. God knows everything about you. He knows the beginning and the end. So first of all, it didn't take him by surprise. It didn't take him by surprise. And since it didn't take him by surprise, he already knew it. All you got to do is start digging, praying, and asking. He said, if a man lacking anything, any wisdom, any knowledge of God he's looking for, he said, let him ask of me, according to the book of James. According to the book of James, he said, ask. Matthew 7, 7, ask and shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Your answer is hidden in the word of God, but you got to do it by faith, even when it don't look popular. Think. How does a man think? How, how, how does a man or woman think? How, how do you process the situation? How do you, in your mind, feel? That's the emotion part. Remember, you got the thought process, you got the emotion process, which is feel. Determine feelings and determine your outcome. How do you feel? How do you feel about the news? Like I said, these are the three areas that the enemy uses to attack you your mind. Act. Your action when a situation occurs. Do you panic or overreact to bad news? Do you shut down and push people away? They try to pray for you, you don't want nobody around. You, you, you want to go pray for everybody else. You want to go pray for everybody else in the room. I'm a deacon, I'm a, I'm a deaconess, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a minister. I'm a minister in training, I'm a pastor. My job is to pray. But as soon as something happened in your family, you don't want believers to pray. You don't want to tell anybody about it. I, don't get me wrong. That's, that's your own business. You can do what you want. But how can you encourage other believers to come to the elders of the church? Those believers, the ones who say they know Christ. What, what kind of example you set for them? When they just want to give you something back. Maybe you bless them. Maybe you pray for them. Maybe you help them through a situation. And all they want to do is return something back to you. No, no, we're private. I don't want nobody to know. We, we, got, we got to stop being fickle with God's word. We got to start representing his word rightly. And people are running away from God because of us. Our actions. I need a miracle. I need you praying. I don't care if you pray in tongues. I don't care what you do. I need you praying. And while you're praying, I'm going to believe by faith. Because I know it's not what it looks like. If God done it before, he'll do it again. And yes, I lost loved one. I lost my mother. I lost my father. I know it how to feel. I lost my brother who was murdered. I lost things that hurt me. But God kept me. I'm here to be a witness to tell you how God's word will keep you through any situation. He will do it. Proverbs 27 and 2. King James Version. So when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise up against me. Hear me. Don't that sound like some troubling times? Don't that sound like some horrible times? Though all these things are coming against me, <laughs> I shall not fear. Though the war shall rise up against me, in this will I be confident. What is this? In this I will be confident. I'll be confident in what the Lord told me I am, who I am, and what I'm able to do because I'm connected to him. In this word I will be confident. In God I will be confident. One thing I had desired of the Lord, that I will seek after Meaning you have to do put, put it to work. You have to put some feet to your faith. And this is what I seek after, that I may dwell in the house, a safe place, of the Lord all the days of my life. Somewhere where I can hear his word. Somewhere where he can throw his wings around me. Somewhere where I can feel comfort and, and relief and the pressure can be removed from my mind and my body. 
all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. My, 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 that's something to be thankful for. These are some of the actions. Without faith in God, you will have the same outcome. If you don't have faith in God, don't expect your situation to change. Without faith. Because he said, without this faith, without this belief, without this movement, you will not be able to move God. But if you use his faith, the faith that he even gives you, he gives you this. And then he said, use it. And if you use it, you can cause God to react in your situation. So meaning that if you're going through something horrible and you use your faith, when you go to looking at the situation that it looks bad, but it's not what it looks like. I know we're dying. I know it looks like we're defeated. But Lord, remember me when you get into your kingdom. And then to hear the words of your Lord and Savior said, this day, I kind of tell somebody tonight that this day, he shall be with you. The Lord will be with you. But you got to open your heart. you got to open up your mind. you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How you think? You're leading right into that next one. That act and the thing. The same outcome without faith. Don't expect anything different. There it is. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without his faith, it's impossible to keep God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. There it is, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, and it's funny how we can hear God's word but go back home to our own same situation. Lord, I ain't, ain't nothing changed. Lord, I've been praying for something. There ain't nothing changed. Lord, what I need to do? I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to step back and look at that tape recorder of what you did through that day. What did you What did you put on that situation? What did you put on somebody else? Did you go out talking negative about somebody? Instead of praying, was you putting somebody down? Did you act like you were better than them? These are the things the Lord had to remind me. He said, you wonder why your prayers are not being answered. I know I'm, t I know I'm speaking the truth. I had to live it. And if you ask God for something, he will show you you. But the thing is, we don't want to see us. Because God will reveal all of us. If we ask, that's why we run. That's why we run from the truth. That's why we run from the word of God. Because the Lord will reveal if you ask. If you don't ask, he will give you nothing. But if you ask him, he will show you you. And sometimes it's horrifying. You mean to tell me my prayers been asked, haven't been answered because of my action? Absolutely. But God said his word will not return unto him void. It will accomplish what it was set out to do. So if the Lord said forgive, if they pray for your enemies, the Beatitude, Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 5, he gives you the instruction. Pray for those who persecute you. But all you want to do is tear down the ones that persecute you. You're going against the word of God. That's what the Lord had to reveal to me. He said, when you stand up before my people, let them know that my word, don't look at me. His word is true. His word is what we should stand on. His word is what's going to uh, reveal him through his word and draw us closer. That prepare our hearts and minds to ask for forgiveness so we can be forgiven we can teach forgiveness. Can we get a Lord of praise right there? And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. 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 Say it with me. Him. <laughs> Please. Please mean move God or cause him to act on your behalf. It is impossible to please him. Please him. Meaning that if you don't use his faith, God will not move or act on your behalf. I don't know about y'all, but I need God to act on my behalf when I'm going through my trials and tribulations. Think. That's the next one. The second one. First one was act. Act. Those are areas that enemy. He, he tried to attack us. When something happened, a situation happened, he look at how he act. That's how he set the snares and traps because he watch what your actions look like. What, what are you doing? 
when this pressure comes, he's watching you. He's watching your every move, so he know what his next snare is going to be to trip you up. Think, that's another one. Uh, Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Remember, the enemy knows the word just better than we do. He was, he know God. <laughs> he know what God is able to do. He know how powerful God's word is. And he's going to keep on. He's going to keep on trying to trip us up. And he said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink. And he said to you, but his heart is not with you. Romans chapter 12, we talked about this. I mention that all the time about, uh, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Hold it. Change. Try to live right. Acceptable unto God, which is what you should be doing, your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not think like this world. Do not move like this world. The world moves by what it sees. God moves by, and God's people move by what you don't see. It's not what it looks like. Your faith causes you to move on things you don't see. That's what I love about the scripture. It said, do not be conformed to this world. This world can trip you up. It can seem like they're winning. It looked like the world had hung our Savior on the cross and he was defeated and it was over. But it wasn't over because it wasn't what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know which one to look at. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> it's not what it looks like. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. God has a will for your life. He will, he wishes above all things that you will prosper and be in good, good health even as your soul prosper. Why? Because you are his instrument for a dying world. God wants to use you as an instrument to be able to reach others. And we're not, God didn't choose, he didn't come looking for a perfect person because if he did, he sure enough would have chosen me. But I think God knew, well, I don't think, I know God knew something that I didn't know. He knew if I got the opportunity to get a mic in my hand and be able to stand before people, he knew I would speak his truth. Because my truth, there's nothing to stand on. It's a stand. It's not a solid foundation. But his word is a solid foundation. And if I give people a solid foundation to stand on, and I keep repeating it over and over again, like he did with his disciples. He had a little faith when they was on the boat, going to the other side, the storm came. Jesus was asleep at the bottom, resting in the middle of a storm, because he knew who he was. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You can have that same strength. You can have that same gift, that same ability that Christ had, be able to rest in the middle of a raging storm in your life. And because you're focusing on what you see and not what you don't see, Jesus knew that his father had everything under control. He knew he had a purpose and a plan to get to the other side. When you know God is going to use you, I know I'm talking to somebody here, forget about what gift or talent or whatever you might be doing in church. When you know God used you as a gift and a talent, to be able to reach others and invest in others. You know no matter what storm you come up, you need to be able to look that enemy in the face and talk to your flesh and say, flesh, you better act right. Enemy, devil, you better get out of my face because the Lord showed me there's somebody on the other side that I have to reach. And you, you know you got to reach somebody on the other side. You won't let your situation stumble or cause you to trip up or cause you to sit and hide in a corner. You will stand up with confidence. Like Paul did, he said, I can't die here because I got to get to Rome. I got to get a message to the Romans. So he knew that shipwreck wouldn't kill him. Paul knew that the snake bite wouldn't kill him. Paul knew almost the stone had to death, knew that the stone in him wouldn't kill him because he had to get to Rome. It's somewhere that I want to take you 
and he promised to get you there. But you got to see past what you see. You got to see it by faith. I wish I could teach you how I'm feeling. God has shown me that you, you got to get up out of that comfort zone. Yeah, you got to do something different. Yes, you got to hold on to what God promised you. He told you you were going to be all right. He told you everything was going to work out perfect. Now it's up to you to believe by faith, not by what you see. Our behavior pattern. Just because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior does not mean your behavior is pure and holy. Can I stop there for a minute? <laughs> Just because you say it don't mean your thoughts, don't mean your behavior is going to be pure and holy all the time. There's two natures inside of you wrestling with each other, warring against each other. Trying to pull you back. The enemy didn't want to let you go. Your flesh don't want to let go of some things. There's always going to be a challenge in life. But you got to remember who paid the price. If you go back to the beginning of the slide I showed you, Jesus on the cross, he paid the price. So when this battle come on between your flesh and your spirit, man, you know that you already had the victory. Even though it looks like he's beating you down. Look like you're down. On, it's, I, I remember when I was a kid, it was... Um, Used to love watching wrestling. And there was this one wrestler called Chief J. Strongbro. And he was an Indian wrestler. And they used to get in the fight. You know what's going to happen. If you watched him back in the 70s, you know what's going to happen. He get beat down. They hit him with boards. And they beat him down. Look like he's losing. Look like he's going to lose the fight. And then all of a sudden, he get that little Indian song. And, and he goes, ooh. <laughs> He go to be jumping around like he's doing an Indian dance and he start getting his strength. And hit him and he'll go to bounce around and he, he's beginning to get his strength back. And that's what believers, that's what we need to know. When the enemy is beating us down, I don't know what caused it. I think, well, I found out now it's fake. But back then I believed that he got some power to be able to overcome what everybody's seen. And what we've seen looked like he was losing but somehow he was able to gain strength and be able to be victorious over his opponent because a wind came in and strengthened him. When we can trust in God and we depend on that wind to come, even though it looks like you're losing, hang on in there. They that wait upon the Lord. He said, I shall renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings like the eagles. That's something to be thankful for. We can just trust in God. Where are you going to go? What are you going to hang on to? You can't hang on to what you see. You can't hang on to what other people say. You got to trust in God. He'll get you through. Here we go. Saul, we talked about thief on the cross. We talked about Jairus' daughter. We talked about the woman with the issue of blood. How it looked it bad, but God turned the situation around. Here's another story. And I'm closing with this. Paul, we know, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. We know Paul, Saul, the name was Saul. He was converted to Paul. But we know once he was converted, this is his conversion found in the book of Acts, chapter 9. We do know during his conversion that Paul, once he got saved, started following Christ. After this conversion, we're going to talk about the conversion. But I just want to jump ahead to those who know the word of God. We know he called himself Paul once he found Christ, once he started serving the Lord, once he realized he had to go through some suffering and, and, and the agony for serving the Lord. We know he called himself the chief of sinners. That's how Paul defined himself, as the chief of sinners. And we know that we were born in sin. We know the sin nature that we have. Paul had a good understanding that I want to let you know where I came from. I don't want you, I want you to know that it's not what it looks like. Y'all look at me as somebody here I'm defined when I read the scripture. I need you to listen to this story. And then we're going to close on this. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. 
This is Saul conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was still bringing threats, out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, against God's people. He went to the high priest and asked for a letter. He went into the synagogue and asked for a letter to the masters so that if he found any who belong to the way, believing in Christ or believing in the followers of Christ, rather a man or woman, it didn't matter, that he might then put them in prison, beat them, and some he even killed. And he neared the masters on his journey, on his way there, on his way there to carry out this assignment against God's disciples and followers. It says, on the way there, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard the voice of him saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? In Paul cried out, who are you, Lord? Saul asked, I am Jesus, the same one I showed you on the cross. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am Christ, I am Jesus, whom you persecute, Paul. Paul, you come against me, Saul. He replied, now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveled with Saul, stood there speechless. You know why? Because they heard something, but they seen nothing. It says they heard sound, but they, they did not see anyone. They thought Paul was crazy. Saul was crazy. Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. When you go against the word of God, when you're going against God's people, sometimes God blinds your eyes. And we say, well, I didn't get my eyes, my sight taken. I still could see but we can get blindness with hatred. We can get blindness with jealousy. We can get blindness with all these other things that contrary to the word of God. And we think we're still in right standing with God because we can still come to church and clap our hands and we still get a good feeling when the word comes forth. But there's no strength, there's no power. So your prayers are empty. Paul was blind. Three days he was blind. Didn't drink or eat anything. The Lord told him, called a prophet, a man of God, one of his disciples named Ananias, said, Ananias, there's a man at the street called Street. His name is Saul, for he is praying. And in the vision, I seen a man named Ananias come. This is what God revealed to him. Saw a man come to lay hands, and Ananias said, I heard of this man. I seen with this man. But Jesus had to tell Ananias, this is where I want to close that right here. Jesus had to tell his own disciple, like I'm telling you, believers, and my closing here, it's not what it looks like. Jesus said, Ananias, Saul is going to be named Paul. I have work for him. And he's going to suffer many things for me. Meaning you're going to go through some things. I'm talking to you tonight. You might have to go through some things, but God's got his hands on you. He sent somebody to lay hands on you to open up your blinded eyes. And in this closing, it's not what it looks like. Just like Ananias laid hands on Paul, Jesus Christ is going to lay hands on you. Open your heart. It's not what it looks like. The Lord loves you. He has his word. He has his place. The church to be able to feed you the word of God. He got godly people that can guide you. And I recommend Shalom Baptist Church. And I want to take this time out right now to thank Pastor Duncan for giving me the opportunity to stand in this pulpit and share his word. And I want to say to you, it's not, it's not what it looks like. Jesus defeated everything on the cross. All you have to do is believe. Believe by faith. God bless you. My name is Pastor Gary Back. Until we meet again, the Lord loves you. Not what it looks like.